Oh my god, this dress. This dress. Let me give you a minute to admire it first. Just look at this beauty. Hi lovelies, this is Sess Fashion back again with another interesting tutorial. I'm going to be showing you the step-by-step -step process in making this lovely dress. As you can see, I have all my seams enclosed on the inside, just like a normal ready-to-wear. Make sure to watch to the end. Please subscribe if you haven't already and join the fam. Turn on notifications so you get notified each time I post a video. And without wasting much time, let's jump right into it. I'll first of all start by drafting the dart on the front neckline and to do that I'll be marking in 2 inches from the center front. The dart is 5 inches long and it's going to be a bit slanted. To do that on the bottom of the dart right here I'll be marking out half inch and then I'll draw a slant line to meet the top. To form the dart I'll mark half inch on both sides like this and then I'll connect to meet the end of the dart. Now for the neck width, go ahead and mark your normal neckline width and then add 1 inch to it. That's because we have taken away 1 inch here for the dart. So we have to include that on the neckline as well. My neckline width is 3.5 inches. You can also use 3 inches depending on your preference. Now to that 3.5 inches, I'm going to add 1 inch making my neckline 4.5 inches. Now from this point where we have marked our neckline width, I'll go down by half inch and this will serve as our new shoulder line. Reasons for this is because we're trying to create a high neckline, something like a cut together turtle neck. Now on this new shoulder line, I'm going to mark my shoulder measurement divided by 2 plus 1 inch that we took away for that. I also like to add my half inch allowance to join to the sleeve so whatever you have go ahead and mark that on the shoulder line. From here we'll drop by one inch to create a shoulder slant and then I'll be curving it up to meet the top of the neckline like this. I'm going ahead to highlight my lines to make them more visible. Next thing now I'll be putting my vertical measurement and from this slant line here where we've dropped by one inch I'll be marking my chest line. And the formula to get that is your bust measurement divided by 6 plus 1.5. So after that, I'll just label this down. And then the next line is the bust point. And you can see where I'm taking my measurements from. I'm taking them from this new shoulder line, which we have marked here. So go ahead and mark your bust points, your under bust, your half lens, your hip line, and as well as the total length of your dress. After marking that, go ahead and rule out your lines and indicate what each line means because this is going to aid our drafting, okay? Now, moving forward, we're going to be drafting the armhole and what I'm doing here, I'm just replicating the shoulder measurement on this chest line and then I'm ruling a straight line. After that, you're going to find the middle of this line and on that middle, you go in by half inch and create a curve passing through the half inch from the slant all the way to the chest line. So guys, this dress has a princess dart and the interesting thing about it is that the princess dart does not extend all the way to the bottom. It stops around the pocket point, okay? That's around the hip. So um, what I did there, I went ahead to mark my bust pan measurement divided by 2 and I ruled it all the way from the bust point down to the hip. Remember that mid armhole point we made earlier? I'm going to be connecting that point down to the bust point but i'm using dot line so that i can make the dots more visible from this now from the point of the waistline here i'm going to take half inch on both sides of this dot line we've drawn and i also do the do the same thing on the under bust line as well take half inch on both sides and then i'm going to connect together with a straight line and from that on the bust, I'll be curving it up to meet the bust point like this, just to give it shape, you know, the princess that shape. Now, coming over to the armhole, um, on this dotted lines, which we've marked here, I'm sorry, mine is not so visible, but you're going to be marking half inch on both sides of that line. And then you're going to make a curve to meet the bust point like this, forming an armhole that... Remember that the dart stops around the pocket area. So from the hip line there, you're going to measure 2 inches upwards. And then I'm going to draw an angular line to meet that point. You know, because this is a princess armhole dart and we have taken away 1 inch there for the dart. 
we have to elongate this side so that by the time we sew them together it will align perfectly if you don't elongate the armhole you're going to have some shortening by the time you join these two points together so just go upwards at this point by one inch to one and a half inch and then you draw a new armhole just like you've seen me do here another thing again because of this that we've taken it has affected the length of the armhole it has made it shorter so what i'm going to do because i've taken away one inch that there i'm going to add one inch to our initial armhole length okay at this point we can go ahead and add our horizontal measurement and the first thing is to divide your bust measurement by four and then add 1.5 inch for same allowance Going over to the waist, I'm going to divide my waist measurement by 4, adding the 1 inch we took away for that and also 1.5 inch for seam allowance. Now going over to the hip to get that oversized hip structure, your hip measurement, you're going to divide it by 4 and then you're going to add 5 inches to whatever you get now going over to the hem of this dress whatever you have marked as your hip measurement you're just going to mark the same thing on the hemline another very important thing that you should not miss out because the last time i made this dress i did not do this and it affected the length of my dress so listen carefully now because of the one inch that we took on the armhole it's going to affect the length of the front piece and by the time we join to the back since the back does not have any armhole dart, by the time we join them together, the front piece will be shorter than the back. And in order to avoid that and ensure that everything balances out nicely, we are going to be adding one inch to this side of the hemline. And from that point, I'm going to be connecting to the center front right here. So now, even after sewing in our darts, this part is going to move up and it's still going to balance nicely. Okay guys, go ahead and cut out your pattern. Just make sure that you're not cutting through the dart, okay? Just watch carefully how I'm cutting this and follow through. Now, after cutting, this is what it looks like. So at this point, I realized that I did not apply my neck deepening. It's very essential to shaping the neckline so that by the time you wear this, it's not choking you. So uh, what I'm going to do from this center front right here, you can go down by half inch or three quarter of an inch, depending on how deep you want it. And then you are going to connect it back to the neckline like this. Go ahead and introduce a fresh pattern paper that we'll be using to cut the back. And now I'm going to draw a straight line here which will serve as the shoulder line. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer the reference lines in which I'll be using. And right here I've marked the hip line. So just watch carefully what I'm doing. I'm marking one inch from the shoulder line down to the hip. The reason for doing this is so that we can have room around the hip areas. Since the waist of this dress is very fitted, we need... A um, allowance around the hip area we need some room right there so that everything can sit nicely okay so after marking out the one inch go ahead and cut it out and then i'll be marking one inch again for our zipper allowance so you can see that i'm marking this one inch all around from the shoulder all to the hem of the dress moving over to the back neckline we are not going to be deepening the back just like we did for the front okay we're going to leave it straight and then for the width of the neck we are going to mark 3.5 inches that's the same with what we have marked for the front the only thing is that we are not adding that one inch we took away for that okay you know there's only going to be that in the front so for the back just go ahead and mark your normal neck width which is 3.5 and you also do the same thing for the shoulder you're going to divide your shoulder by two and then mark we are not adding one inch for that because there's no that at the back neckline you can see the way i'm placing the front piece on the back pattern right i'm trying to replicate the neckline that is the high neckline the total neck because we need them to align while sewing so i'm just placing it above that half inch line we drew there for the shoulder and i'm tracing out the shoulder and the neck now you can go ahead and mark your chest line just from that shoulder slant there mark your bust measurement divided by six plus 1.5 and then you can mark your half length your hip length and your total length you can see the way i'm placing my tape right just at that half inch shoulder line we drop there place your tape from there and mark your half length your hip length and as well as the total length of your dress 
next thing now from the center bar go ahead and mark your bust pan divided by two and then draw a straight line for the length of the dart it's going to be one inch below the chest line and five inches from the half length line now on that waistline mark half an inch on both sides of the dart line and then just draw an angular line to form your dart like this next thing now we're going to be inserting our round horizontal measurements and the first thing you're going to divide your bust by four and you add 1.5 inch allowance going over to the waist you divide your waist measurement by four add the one inch we've taken here for that and also add your one and a half inch sewing allowance now for the hip remember that we are drafting an oversized hip structure so you're going to divide your hip measurement by four and then you add five inches just like how we did for the front now go ahead and mark the same thing you have marked on the hip on the hemline of this dress then you can connect all your dots together like this at this point where we've marked our bust measurement just curve it in to create the armhole like this and then you can cut out your pattern now we're done i'm just going to place my front and back piece side by side so you can see the difference you can see that the back neckline is straight while the front neckline is curved for the hem of the dress you can see this slant we have at the front here by the time we sew up the dart it's going to fall in perfectly and align with the back now to draft the cap sleeve i'll first of all fold my pattern into two like this and then i'm going to draw a straight line which will be the beginning of the sleeve now the length of our sleeve is five inches i'm going to mark that out and then draw a line across after doing that i'm going to mark my arm measurement divided by two my round arm measurement and whatever i have i'm going to be adding 1.5 inch allowance to that at this point where you've marked your arm measurement you're going to drop it by one inch and draw a line across this is just so that the sleeve can sit nicely now to create the sleeve cap you're just going to cover it from the top down to meet the end of our sleeve just like this to be sure that this is going to fit to the armhole of our dress we're just going to bring our pattern here and measure around the armhole and then we're going to insert what we have right here mine is okay now at this down part i'm just going to cover it to meet the top of the line like this so at this down part i'm going to have to add one inch hemming allowance to it because i want to have like an inseam finishing that is it go ahead and cut out your sleeve and this is what it looks like now i'm done drafting the pattern i'll go ahead and cut my pattern on fabric and here i have my pink crepe fabric my pink cotton lining and hair tape i'm starting with my main fabric and i folded into two to cut out the main piece now for the front piece you're going to be aligning the center front to that folded part because there's no opening in the center so we have to align it at the part where there is no opening okay so i'm going ahead to add seam allowance around the edges that i have not added i'll be adding half inch around the neckline and shoulder once i get to the dart part you're going to cut it this way you can see the way i'm maneuvering to cut the seam allowance around here i'm leaving about quarter inch to join the dart together you have to open this dart up so that you sort of know where the dart ends while sewing we've added our side seam allowance to the body and armhole so there's no need to do that again when you get to the hem of the dress make sure to add your one inch sewing allowance and that is it for the front of the dress whatever you've cut on the main fabric go ahead and do the same thing for the lining and cut out accordingly now the only difference is that we are not adding one inch hemming allowance to this lining piece because we're trying to have a nice bottom finish now for the back piece go ahead and cut out two pieces for it you're going to leave your half inch seam allowance around the neck and the shoulder and also around the hem you leave your one inch sewing allowance again the side and the armhole allowance has been added already so you don't need to do that anymore now repeat the same thing for the lining the only difference is that no hemming allowance is added to the lining just like the front i've gone ahead to also cut my sleeve on fabric and for the lining of the sleeve you can see that i'm cutting off this one inch allowance like i said i want to have an inseam finishing so i'm cutting off this allowance and then i'll cut the lining piece without the allowance time to sew now i'm going ahead to join the dart lines first i'll be 
placing them like this and i'll be joining together with that allowance we left there i also do the same thing for the lining i'll be doing them separately i'll be joining the dark lines like this and after i'm done joining this is what it looks like you can see i went ahead to give it a nice press and this is what the lining looks like next thing now we'll transfer the front neck dart and to do that we're going to fold the fabric into two like this and we're going to be repeating the same thing that we have done on the pattern on the main fabric okay so just go ahead and trace it out if you're not able to trace it just draw it accordingly i went ahead to draw it out on my lining as well after sewing it down this is what it looks like i went ahead to give it a nice press and i also did the same for my lining piece also for the back we'll be transferring the dart i'm going to be showing you an easy way to do that i went ahead to open up my dart i opened it up and then i'm going to be tracing it like this you see the way i'm doing this after doing that you're just going to highlight your lines and then you do the same thing for the main fabric and the lining piece after i'm done sewing up the dart the next thing now we're going to be joining the front pieces to the back pieces i'll be joining them at the shoulders so i'm just going to align them right sides facing each other and i'll be stitching them together on the shoulder by half inch after joining that the next thing now is to attach the sleeve and to do that i'm going to open this up and then i'm going to be sewing right sides facing each other so i'm just basically aligning the middle of my sleeve to the seam line we have on the shoulder line okay and then i'll sew from one end to the other so guys note that whatever you are doing to this main fabric you are also doing the same thing for the lining piece we are just sewing them separately so that we can end up joining them later on so now the next thing after joining the sleeve we're going to be joining the sides and to do that we're going to turn this to the wrong side and you're going to sew it with the allowance we had left earlier if you want it a bit free just go ahead and leave some inches around there for ease I'm going to be fixing a thick welt pocket to this dress and the measurement for this pocket unfold is 6 inches. The width is also 6 inches. So by the time you join the two sides, you're going to end up having 5.5 inches. Okay, go ahead and sew them together and then iron nicely. I went ahead to join the sides of my dress as you can see and I've ironed down my pockets nicely. So now the measurements I'll be using to fix this from the shoulder, you're just going to measure down 23 inches or better still where the dart ends is where you're going to be attaching the pockets to i'm going ahead to mark where i would like to place the pocket and note that i'm marking this on the right side of my fabric so after sewing the two sides of the pocket we had 5.5 inches left so i'm just going to distribute that 5.5 inches in between the dart okay so on the side of the dart where it's facing inwards i'm going to mark 1.5 inch and then the remaining side will go to the side of the dart i hope you understand now watch carefully how i'll be placing this i'm going to place my dart facing up upwards first like this and i'm going to sew it half inch okay and then i'm going to turn it over and then top stitch on it i'll show you what it looks like after i'm done now remember the side of the front piece where we elongated the hem to fit to the back uh, i ended up having excess so i'm just going ahead to cut that part off so that everything can align nicely okay after fixing the pocket this is what it looks like you can see that i went ahead to stop stitch it everything is lying down nicely as it should be bringing over my lining like i said earlier whatever i'm doing for the main fabric i'm doing the same thing for the lining so i've gone ahead to join the sides together the sleeves and everything like i did for the main fabric next thing now before attaching them together i'm going to first of all attach the zipper to the main fabric so i'm just going to place it like this on the wrong side and then i'm going to mark where the zipper ends ensure that the point where you're marking is actually one inch above the zipper okay one inch above the point where the zipper ends at that point where it ends i'm going to sew down with one inch all down to the hem bring over your lining and sew from the same point as well from there all through to the hem i've gone ahead to stitch it this is what it looks like as you can see like i said i also did it for the lining so the next thing now is to attach the zipper and you know we left one inch allowance along the zipper point so that is what you'll be using to 
attach the zipper so i'll take this over to my machine attach the zipper and show you what it looks like now that we're done fixing the zipper it's time to attach the lining to the main fabric and to do that we're going to be attaching it on the neckline so i'm going to bring over my fabric turn it to the right side and also place the right side of the lining on top of it that is right sides facing each other and then i'm going to be sewing around from one neckline to the other i've gone ahead to sew the necklines together you can see the way i sew this i have my zipper in between the main fabric and the lining and i went ahead to align all my seams that is the dart seams and the shoulder joining seams after that i'm just going ahead to notch this neckline so that everything can sit down nicely and after doing this i'm going to take it over to my machine and top stitch on top of the lining i'll push all my sewing seams to towards the lining and top stitch on top of it the next thing we're going to do now is to join the hem of the dress and while cutting we cut the lining shorter than the main fabric the reason for that is so that by the time we sew it together we're going to have a nice bottom finish so to join these two hems together i'm going to remove my fabric inside out to the wrong side to get a nice inseam sewing listen carefully to what i'm about to say after turning it to the wrong side you are going to pick up the right side of the main fabric and the right side of of the lining piece and you're going to mesh them together so you just look for any line that you can easily find so for me i'm going to pick up at the zipper point that is the zipper seam there which is the back i'm going to pick up the right side of my fabric and the right side of my lining piece and i'm going to mesh them together aligning that zipper line together okay and then you're going to pin this round to be sure that you have got it accurately after pinning it down you're going to take this over to the machine and sew all the way around after i'm done stitching this is what it looks like we're also going to do the same thing for the sleeves so like i said Take your fabric inside out, make sure that it is on the wrong side. After doing that, pick up the right side of your sleeve and the right side of your lining piece at the sleeve. And you're going to be aligning the lines together. Okay, right sides facing each other, mesh them together. Pin round. After pinning, go ahead and sew together. After stitching, you can see that everything looks nice and clean after turning it out and this is what the back looks like. You can see we have our zip part still opened. Now listen carefully, since we're trying to achieve an inseam sewing, this is what you're going to do. You're going to abandon the opening we have at the zipper and you're going to create another opening which we're going to use to turn it inside out and then sew the zipper inside. Just watch carefully, okay? At the side of the waist here go ahead and create an opening like three inches to four inches just enough to be able to pass this through and then turn out your fabric to the wrong side in such a way that you have separated the lining piece from the main piece now pick up the zipper at this neckline and then push all your seams behind the main piece you get just like you do when you're trying to top stitch because we're basically trying to top stitch on the zip so just push all your seams towards the lining okay making sure that you have your pieces right sides facing each other and then top stitch on the zipper okay so right now you have the main fabric the zipper and the lining so just the way you stitched on the main fabric stitch again on the lining after the actual line if that makes sense now go ahead and stitch on both sides of the zip and that is it remember the opening we have here i'm going to be turning it back to the right side so after turning it this is what we have i'm going to take this over to the ironing board and give it a nice press this is the finished look everything is so clean all the seams are enclosed inside just like the normal ready to wear dresses so now we've come to the end of this tutorial if you find this video helpful please give it a like if you have any questions or suggestions you can leave that down in the comment section don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you get updated when i post more videos like this thank you so much for watching see you in my next tutorial